we'll take questions then for student athletes once we're done. Boy, when you <laughs> ask for a statement, I don't know. I don't know what to say. You know, uh, I'm looking at the box here, so I can believe it. It's on paper, and I'm so I'm so proud of our guys. I'm so proud of our staff. Um, pitching coach Dan Hubbs talked about it a couple times when he's, as a pitcher at USC when he was close. He was in the final final game, but never quite got to Omaha. Assistant coach Tony Arnerich was in the regional final at Fullerton, but didn't get to Omaha. Coach Sam Filippo's just like the like the rest of us. He was a uh, a mutt baseball player like myself and Coach Hubs, and to, the, to take this team and to be a part of this team is just so gratifying. Um, you know, it's uh, you know we were we were cut as a program when we were just in informal workouts. We hadn't even had our first full team practice, and to watch our kids um, on that on that Saturday go out and play baseball like nothing was nothing was happening and that's what they were meant to do and then behind the scenes have to deal with all the pressures of trying to figure out their lives and then to be here today I, I could not be prouder of a bunch of kids and a, and a staff to have gone through what we have and to, and to come out the other side and they'll never forget this the rest of their lives and you know it uh, I said I said at a press conference before the season even started that not many times coaches get a chance to, to you know, to elicit how they feel about their team, and actually, sometimes by the end of the year, they don't like their team all that much. But I, <laughs> but I, I said at the start of the year, and I knew that I said I loved coaching this team. I love coaching this team, and nothing would have changed win or lose this weekend. But um, it just feels so good for a group of guys that you that you love to see them uh, experience baseball at its at its highest level, and it's and to see them come out on top. So, yeah, open questions. Ryan Gorsey, BearTerritory.net. Uh, Chad, you went over for 4 yesterday, and that was probably the longest. Is that the longest home run you've ever hit, and is that the biggest home run you've ever hit in your life? I don't know. I didn't really see where it landed. I was just, I knew if I got it up in that jet stream that it was probably going to go out. So I didn't necessarily see how far it went, but I was just happy with the home run we got. Right off the bat, we got some runs. And, uh, Tony, uh, you've had that, that gimpy quad, and you went over four yesterday and went three for five today. What was the feeling for you with all you've been through personally? Oh, it was great. Um, you know, <laughs> Chad and I are roommates, and we usually eat an apple before every game. We forgot to eat our apples yesterday. <laughs> but we did everything else the same. That's why we won. <laughs> we just forgot to get our apples, so we both went over on the day. But we had our apples today. We were sure of it. <laughs> And uh, both came up with some hits, so uh, I, you know, felt great. And to get this win and, and go to Omaha is amazing. So. Still living in the locker room? <laughs> he is. <laughs> yeah, we're with AP. It might even be worth repeating how that first practice went after you had heard about the program being cut and how Coach said that. Uh, what you said, did no practice. You called practice up or called it optional. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, gave, I gave them the option. I said, but, you know, if you, a, if you need a day or two, you know, to, to get away and collect your thoughts and talk to your parents and, you know, come into our office and talk to us, and I'm okay with it, you know. And, and uh, to a man, they said, we're practicing today. And we went out at 1.15 and we, and we went through our informal workouts before getting ready for the end of the weekend scrimmage. What did that mean to, to you and to the team? You know, it, it, it hit me right, right over the head right away when I said, you know, here, here they are um, getting some really difficult news that they're not happy with, obviously, but they're not going to back away one inch from their commitment to each other and the baseball team and to their coaches. And, you know, to see them all out there, and you would not have known the news that they got earlier that day by the, by the way they were practicing. It was baseball. That's what they loved to do. That's what they were... You know, they were born to do that, just like they were born to be here today and, and, and make this happen. So um, it was, it was. you know, we, I remember as a coaching staff, we looked at each other and said, we, we got a different team here. Uh, Jimmy Durkin, Oakland Tribune. Um, for any of the players, uh, how much do you think, you know, that practice, this whole experience, even kind of brought you guys closer? And, and do you think that all that you had to deal with Maybe played a role in you guys being able to pull this off and head to Omaha. 
I mean, the, the whole, uh, you know, getting getting dropped and everything, it definitely brought us closer together. But, um, you know, going out for that practice, like Coach says, is it, it was a team decision. And, uh, you know, it, it's what we love to do. We love to play baseball. And we love to be around each other. And, I mean, you know, there's, there's not a single person on this team who I, I wouldn't stand up for or stand next to in anything. And, uh, I mean, I love him like my brother. And, um, you know, it's a, uh, this whole year has brought us closer together. And, and, you know, that's a huge reason why we're at where we, where we are today. And, and, you know, I'm incredibly proud of everybody on the team for hanging tough and, and you know, fighting through it and getting us to where we are. So. Michelle Smith, ESPNW, you guys had that moment after the game, you had your dog pile, and then you went and you applauded the fans in the stands. You know, maybe you do that after a big game on a normal day, but did any of it have, you know, what was the extra special meaning for you guys, if you could articulate that? Oh, I mean, the extra special meaning was that we're going to Omaha. I think, uh, you know, we're all really excited. The fans kind of stuck with us through everything, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, they're here for the, for the support, and, um, especially like the alumni, all the alumni out that were out there, you know, the, the, the pregame um, and everything, all the events that took place um, that the alumni have done. You know, it's not only for us, but it's for them too. It's for everyone who's ever been, um, you know, on the, on the California um, Golden Bears baseball team. You know, I, I, told, our, I told our team a story. Um, which I, I do often, as I, I told them about a, a uh, interview that I did on the bench at Omaha when we won the national championship uh, when I was at Stanford, and, and and I said I mentioned to the reporter something that you know macho twenty two year old baseball guys don't necessarily mention. And I said, you know, this was this showed what what twenty five guys who love each other can do. And I said, you know, I see that in you guys because we had a ball girl at Rice. And she posted on her Facebook, um, one of my coaches told me, she goes, you know, that ball girl posted on her Facebook, she said, you know, I'm, I love this California team. You can tell these guys love each other. And I said, that struck me. When people can see the affection that you have and the camaraderie that you have for each other, you can do anything. So I, I, I told them that, you know, anything is possible with this group because of, of how close they bonded together and, and how they feel about each other. And, uh, you know, they're gonna. They're having an experience that's gonna affect and impact the rest of their lives. I, I've got a phone call or a text from virtually every one of my teammates that played on that national championship team at Stanford, and they're and they're rooting for the Bears, and and that that tells you a lot of how how teams can be close and stay with you for the rest of your lives. Gentlemen, Terry Bernal from San Mateo Daily Journal. I've got a question for each player individually, so I'll just shoot right down the line first for Tony. Uh, can you just uh, give your review uh, as to uh, Derek Campbell's defensive play at second base tonight? He did a great job. Um, you know, and, and deciding, me and Coach deciding to not um, have me play defense this weekend, I was completely fine with it knowing that Derek Campbell was playing <laughs> second base. Uh, the kid can straight up pick it. I mean, he's, he's probably one of our, you know, if not our best, one of our best defenders on the team. And uh, I mean, he's smooth. He's got a great arm, and, and he can play all three of the positions. And he could probably play first base too. So I'll give him that. Um, I, he's he's a great player, and, and uh, you, know, it's, you know, he did a great job. So. Do you think he's pretty much flawless tonight? Yeah. yeah, he did a great job. Uh, and Chad, I'd like to ask you uh, specifically before the home run, uh, you actually had a powwow uh, with the coach, third base coach. Do you remember how that conversation went? Yeah, he just told me a little something um, to pick up with the, the middle infielders, you know, uh, off speed that, you know, they would shift a certain <laughs> way. Um, and that's, you know, that it's crucial. You know, it helped us out, I think. And, you know, I came back in the dugout and told everyone else. So, Did it help you on the, the home run swing at all? Yeah, I think it did. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And then, Eric, uh, congratulations on a, a game well pitched tonight. Thank you. And um, I would like to know specifically about uh, – uh, how you went about uh, establishing your secondary stuff tonight? Because it seemed like in the first inning you're pretty much out there with just a fastball. Uh, could you confirm or deny that? And then 
uh, elaborate as to how you went about uh, establishing your secondary stuff? Well, I think uh, Justin Jones laid it out for me yesterday. You know, he's mixing his changeup in with his curveball and that cutter. And then he'd have his, um, you know, he mixed well with all four of his pitches. And I think that was the key for me tonight is, you know, I, at one point in time, I had all four of my pitches working for me. And even though I go out in the first inning and throw mostly fastballs, you know, my curveball, changeup, and uh, slider was working for me tonight well. Okay. And they all seemed to, to really set in in the second inning there by the second. Yeah, I, I kind of had my juices flowing in the first inning. Right. And, uh, you know, Coach Astrew comes up to me and taps me on the shoulder and says, you know, catch your breath. And that just made me, you know, relax. I took a deep breath and just realized where we are and what we've accomplished. And, you know, let's go, let's go to Omaha. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Another question? Yeah, Aaron Fitt, baseball manager for the players. Has it struck you guys yet just how – fantastic the story is, the, the storybook nature of it all, to, to get this program to Omaha for the first time in 19 years, and the same season you guys were on the chopping block. Has that, has that hit you guys yet? Uh, I think so, a little bit. I don't know. I don't know if it's settled in yet, but uh, let me tell you what, we we definitely play for each other. You know, you know, the, we, hearing about the program being cut is you know, it made us stronger and it made us a tighter bunch. And, uh, you know, we play for each other out there. We don't, we uh, kind of set all the other things aside. Um, Coach, uh, just briefly, we, we, all, we all saw Justin, obviously, with uh, the sling on. Is, is there any update uh, on his injury going forward? Yeah, they don't. They don't have many answers yet. You know, it is. It's a, it's the bicep. It's not an elbow or a shoulder. You know, so that that's a good thing. But they're. Um, but it did. It did cause him some discomfort. And and I think they just try to immobilize it. He could go without the sling. But I think the doctors are just being precautionary. I know he's going to get some MRIs and some tests in the next couple of days. But uh, um, they're not sure whether it could stem from you know something in the neck or shoulder or, or somewhere <coughs> outside. It's just kind of residual pain. Any other further questions? As much as you guys have talked about playing for yourselves and playing for each other and the love within the team, I have to ask, is there any part of you guys that feels indebted to the people that put together the money to save this program? I mean, is any part of what you guys have done this run that you've made, you feel like it's been, you know, part of it is for the people that did that for you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the only reason we're around is because of the people that back us and the people that, that put their own money, their hard-earned money behind us and behind this program and have supported us through uh, through it all. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm forever grateful that they came through for us, came through in the clutch, and, and you know, they, with them behind us, we're, we're an extremely strong team, and, and if we stay together as a group, we're, you know, we're even stronger, so. Is that it? Okay, thank you much. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. Yes.